Joining me on the Tech Week TV sofa now is Dr. Alexandra Daisy Ginsberg, who is one of Somerset House Studios' resident artists. Daisy, thank you very much for joining us here at Tech Accelerate at London Tech Week. My pleasure. Um, what's your What's your involvement in the show? Uh, well, I was speaking on a panel this morning mm -hmm. about the future of AI and getting to grips with all sorts of technologies from operating theatres to uh, sort of surveillance in our homes and trying to unpack what that means for humans and the non-human. Yeah, okay, so fill me in a little bit here because yeah. you're a resident artist at Somerset House Studios and just speaking on an AI panel about the impact of AI. So, so what, what's the bit in the middle? What's your relationship as an artist yeah. with AI and how does it uh, influence your work? Well, I've started making work using AI and machine learning this year, actually, so it's a new departure for me. In the past, my work has really focused on synthetic biology, so working with engineers and scientists who, trying, who are trying to design living things, and I've been interested in, in working with them to ask, well, what is good design and who gets to decide? And the natural progression into AI, especially as synthetic biology starts using machine learning techniques in, in the lab, it's also to really start asking questions about the nature of living things themselves and our relationship with other life forms as humans. So you, you spoke about this uh, recent yeah. work where you have been using AI uh, to, to, to uh, create some of your uh, works of art. Tell me about some recent yeah. projects and how technology has influenced yeah. those. Well, I've escaped the studio today to be here. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, everyone is busy trying to use machine learning to rebuild the Dawn Chorus. So we, the Dawn Chorus, chorus yes. okay. So we were commissioned by Somerset House and ADO, uh, which is a cultural center in New York and, mm -hmm. and soon to be Berlin, to make a work that explores the impact of 24-7 lifestyle on humans. And I wanted to expand beyond the human and look at other species. So we are rebuilding the Dawn Chorus to look at the effects of urbanization on bird populations because I'd never really thought about it, but I learned that birds are singing a higher pitch for, loud, for longer, singing louder. Near airports, there's, there are birds singing about 23 minutes earlier, mm. and only those who can adapt will survive. So there's a huge impact on other species that then you know, downstream has effects on us. So we're using machine learning to, to try and analyze how birds sing and adding in urban noises into the mix to create a completely new dawn chorus. So with, with, with any machine learning, you need a, a, a data set that the, that the system can learn from. Uh, tell me what your input is then in that case for the, for the dawn chorus project. Well, it turns out there aren't many great data sets for <laughs> working with machine learning on bird sound. And so it's quite an experimental project. We're working with faculty who are an AI specialist company and uh, we have a fellow uh, machine learning expert who has um, working with us on a fellowship. So he's a string theory specialist and we're using GAN or Generative Adversarial Network and we've had to build a data set. So building 50,000 individual vocalizations from open source sets uh, of, of bird calls available online to then train the GAN. And there isn't a lot of work that has been done with sound. So we're actually doing something quite experimental and testing how you can even do this. And, and it takes us into very new territory as artists where questions around authorship and uh, you know, how much do yeah. you give into the machine? All, this, all these other kinds of questions that you wouldn't normally consider as an artist start to come into play. So here you are at London Tech Week at, at Tech Accelerate, where all of these technologies, AI and uh, machine learning being just one of those, but many others all under one roof here. Tell me, what have you made of it so far? Well, I'm just quite overwhelmed by the scale of it. Mm. And in a way, as I go from stand to stand, looking at the, these sort of glossy sort of futures presented to me, I can only question, you know, what are we solving for? And a lot of my work is about our relationship with nature and technology and why do humans make things? And, you know, as we get further and further down this sort of rabbit hole of artificial intelligence and artificial life to solve our problems, I wonder how many of those problems could be solved through other means, through social change or, or other factors. And also, it's a very corporate environment, and so we have to ask... Um, who is going to control all these technologies and as individuals and citizens and consumers how you know and the people behind these companies are also those things as well how do we actually 
explore the responsibility and where we should draw boundaries. Many of the questions you draw on there are, you know, we are very well aware of them in, in many ways, you know, and uh, the questions around is AI something that we should be scared of is, is certainly very at the, at the forefront of many consumers' minds as well as uh, on, the, on the business side as well. And indeed around ownership of futures, around uh, corporate greed or not and, and data ownership. But I find it really interesting how you are taking AI, things that some people should be scared of, in a way to kind of shine a light on on humans' impact well, on cityscapes. For me, it's the same journey that I took into synthetic biology 10 years ago. Is I didn't understand the technology. I don't have a science background. Right. And I wanted to understand more and understand my concerns. And the best way to do that was to learn more. And I had the privilege to, to be able to do that. And in, in the same with AI. AI is not one thing. It's many different things. And so as we start experimenting with the technology in the studio and looking at how you develop the technology with a different lens, so with an artistic or creative lens rather than a, a, so a business lens, you also still get insight into how the technology works and it raises new questions that we should all be asking of it. Daisy, thank you very much for bringing your very different lens on this event here into the studio and I, I hope that you, are, uh, that you enjoy and make the most of the rest of the week here. Thank you, it's great to be here. Thank you.